best ones. Helped immeasurably if you happen to be at a stadium um, drinking draft beer in the sunshine. That's good fun once in a while. This is a very big herd of zebra. So you've got the stallion up front there. That'll be his harem. And I suspect there might be a little bachelor group walking behind. Uh, this won't be all his group. That'll be his little harem in front there. There we go. So probably three mares, two young foals that are his. And that will be his, his little family. Four mares, actually. He's got four ladies and their babies, and then the others, just looking with my powerful binoculars, will either be a little bachelor group or a second kinship group. And those enormous herds of zebra that you see migrating with the wildebeest in the Serengeti are an agglomeration of lots and lots of these different kinship groups, as we call them, led by a stallion his, with his harem. Yeah, now I think that is actually another little harem. And then one of the questions that we get asked an enormous amount, or not one of the questions, or one of the, one of the sentiments that is expressed through some of the questions that we get, um, is, you know, will animals look after each other when they're sick? Will they look after orphaned ones? Or will they just leave them to die? And they, people who have been watching for a while and who've studied African mammals and animals always use the elephant as an example. Elephants will always adopt an orphaned animal and try and help it to survive it will be suckled by another female if there's a lactating female in the herd and then he'll be looked after and people often ask like happy cub just has will something like a herd of zebras do the same thing if a cub is orphaned will it be looked after by another mare in the kinship group happy cub almost universally not i'm afraid um, and it is, it's such a funny thing, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a question we ask a lot because of our human psychology and it's one of the things that helps us to attach and identify with animals when they do human things, egalitarian things, um, kind of self, uh, perform selfless acts for other animals. But there are very few mammals in which you see that kind of behavior and zebras certainly aren't one of them. What would more likely happen, unfortunately, Happy Cub, is that if a zebra mother was killed and there was a foal, that foal would probably start alarm calling and would may even be killed by another adult zebra to prevent it attracting predators to the area. So we certainly saw that at one stage. We saw a zebra horrible incident where a... Um, ah, horrible is putting a judgment on it. Um, disturbing, difficult to watch incident where we had a a zebra stallion killing a young foal. Uh, he broke its leg and then killed it and it was very, very distressing to see. I'll just get an update on the radio quickly. Sorry, go again with that. Copy confirmed they're running north back into Biffleshook. Yeah, somebody they're running east right now. Okay, copy. Do you think I'll get visual if I come along um, the the cut line, the Biffleshook cut line? Okay, copy that. Thanks very much. Brent, have you copied that and you close up? Please go for it. Um, there's reports of wild dog just up ahead on the Biffles of Cut Line. We're going to drive at a great speed, see if we can get there. Fascinating stuff. Stand by one. We'll see how fast this rusty thing can go.
Now they are right on the northern boundary everybody, so if they do go north we won't see them, but it's well worth having a go to see if we yeah. can get there. Go ahead. What was the position of the animals? Going north from the Bussuk Dam, um, but then turning south again. They're running around that area on the Bussuk Cut Line now. Um, probably two minutes from there. Hey, copy. I'm at uh, Bussuk Dam. Uh, what's your position? I'm on Chile Cut Line. You go for it, Brent. See if you can get a view. Copy. So Brent, Brent is at Buffelzook Dam, he's going to get up, uh, that's a little bit north of us now, uh, closer to where the dogs might be, yeah, we'll carry on going this way. Coming south. Okay, copy that, thanks. Brent, uh, you have copy that? I'm just going to the dip behind the dam, I'm going to be up on the cut line in a second. Copy that. Okay, Brent's right there. There's only one other station there, or oh, station, I mean other vehicle. So we can probably oh, both okay. get in there if they're on the hunt. Now those of you who haven't seen wild dogs before, wild dogs are the wolves of Africa. Right, let's pop across to Brent quickly. He'll take, keep you posted and I will see you hopefully there right now. Hi everyone, and obviously you've heard. What's up? The art should be around here now. Andrew, Andrew. Andrew, I'm on Bubbles of Cut Line. I've just come from Bubbles of Town. Where are they, sorry? I'm trying to get out of here. Hi, everybody. Brent is uh, over there. The dogs are heading towards the dam. The dam is over there. We're all going in the same place. Okay, and whoever okay. gets to see them first, well, Good luck to him. Very much a team effort this of course. I can smell a water bug. Not that that's very helpful when you're looking for wild dogs. Right, we're going to turn down the fire break here. Not a particularly good piece of road. Hold on, Brian. Watch the aerial doesn't crown you. Right. Okay, okay. So they're just in there, in theory. But they do move at an incredible speed. Okay, let's go across to Brent. I think he's got them. We've got the dogs, um, they're at the Bufflesook waterhole. They just managed to sneak behind us. I've just got to tell Andrew where they are quickly. Andrew, they're at the Martina. They just chased some piva, or the puppies chased the piva, but no success. Oh, there's another one coming in. All the pups in front of us, this is the first time I've seen these pups. They're all very unsure about that hippopotamus. And this is definitely a fantastic way to find the first predator of the evening. And of course, it happens to be my favorite, the African wild dog. And I'm just gonna try to get opposite the puppies while they drink. You can see wild dogs are always very, very nervous around water. They're very scared of crocodiles. So you can see the little guys 
drinking out of a little puddle a little bit further back from the water. See that very nervous watching the water and also the hippos they need a little bit of movement sometimes cause them to get a bit of a, a fright so I hope you guys are getting some good screenshots of this oh here we go hello little guys so I'm ecstatic this is the first time I've seen these guys um, with the little ones And it's amazing that they are completely free of a den already at this young age and they travel with the pack. Hello little guys. So there's one run, they're going to run on top of the wall. There was some water bite just on the other side. Okay. Oh, hello. So we can't move. We've got wild dogs all around behind us coming to have a closer look at us. They're very curious, the little guys. And I love it when they're this age, their, their feet almost look too big for the rest of them. Got a bit of growing to do. So it is a big pack. There are three adults in this pack and 11 pups from what I last heard. But very sad. Wild dogs have about a 70% mortality rate um, with the, the youngsters. So I think there were 12 or 13 when they started. I'm not 100% sure. Right, then we'll, you know, Those hearing the click, it's just me taking a few photographs. I'm trying to get left side, or was it right, or left side photographs for. Um, the Endangered Wildlife Trust to monitor all the uh, wild dogs in this area. So if any of these do make it to adulthood, they'll have an ID kit for them. Okay, before they disappear, um, I've followed wild dogs a lot in my years and I know how quickly they can move. So I'm going to try and get up ahead so we don't lose them. Hold on. Very much. Very, very happy person right now. And hopefully we get to see the hunter shortly. Okay, we're going to lose signal possibly through the step, but we'll be up possibly through. We just want to keep an eye on where the adults are going. So we've got all the youngsters here. Oh, they're so wonderful. I'm hoping that we're going to actually turn off onto this road, but it looks like they're going to go straight into the block. Okay, we've got an adult here. Okay. Two adults. Uh, Andrew, I'm here for your corner. Any updates? Oh my gosh. So, guys, it's going to be on the radio just to let them know, everyone else know where they're going. Andrew, can you still see them? 
the most ideal. It's quite a thick block and we don't want to lose them. Gives you some serious workouts on the arms following wild dogs. Here we go. And just quickly, I didn't quite catch the name because I was concentrating on not breaking the car. But the question was, are they considered Sean? Are they considered the most successful of the hunters? Uh, yes, Sean. Uh, they have about an 80% success rate in the areas. So eight out of ten times that they chase something, they catch it. Uh, as opposed to lion and cheetah and leopard stuff or wolf. Uh, we're well below 20%. Andrew, they're still moving uh, sort of south in the block parallel to Quarry Pan Road. And for a good place would be Quarry Pan Junction um, with Inyala Red North. Andrew, you got your hard hat on? So we've got one adult leading in the front there. And we've got all the youngsters off opposite us. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna try and have to coordinate. Um, the other guys with the longer vehicles sometimes have quite a lot of trouble following the dogs through these thick blocks. Hold on. So we've still got one adult here, I think the youngsters are behind us. It's hard to believe that we can lose a huge pack of dogs like that. But we've got the one adult oh, still on the move. And fortunately for us, we found a big elephant path, which makes our life moving through here a little bit easier. with this guy as he runs through the, the bush here. I can't see the rest of the pack now, but as long as we can see one. Going down to the road. And we keep an eye on it for me while I try and get us through. James, James. Yeah, me. We can't go that way. So guys, unfortunately, they are um, going down into an area where we have some bad signal, but I'll try and get there as soon as possible. 
Uh, and I can't actually go. Up. It's a really steep drop for the drainage line. There's a useless vehicle that was called Rusty. All right, we'll go back to Brent. We'll keep you posted. Um, Craig, uh, say again, I was busy. Uh, what's the update on Oh, yes. And now we're on a yellow board. Uh, we're running after the uh, Kudu, but the uh, mid. Now, uh, yeah, I got a, a young Kudu here standing from uh, stand by and see them. Oh, yeah, copy. You follow them without you. This car is. Yeah, same. I've got uh, three coming out of it. the puppies I can't follow them unfortunately the car is broken look at that isn't that wonderful a firm yellow road north junction quarry pan oh look at that isn't that just wonderful okay they are now crossing the road west Alright, good thing. That's far from me, so let's see if I can turn around. Let's just say cross west instead of horrible stuff. Or maybe try Heiner Road. They've crossed now. I can't move, I'm afraid. The car is broken. He's got something to do with the gallon of oil I poured into it. <laughs> Louise, can you confirm whether the audio is live? All right, everybody. Um, if you did, I did say a very bad word about the car just now. Sorry about that. If you did hear it, I apologise, especially if there are kids um, watching. The dogs have gone off in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, if you didn't hear it, ignore everything I said. Uh, the dogs have gone off through there um, and towards Hyena Road. The car is uh, totally stationary, I'm afraid. I can't start the engine. So, Brent is here now. He will try and cut through there. Tax will go around the other side to try and pick them up on Hyena Road. And um, well, that's the state of play at the moment. Brent's signal is not very good where he is at the moment, so I'm afraid you're going to have to stay with me for now. Um, and I will... <laughs> well, we, we will narrate as we can. I'm going to try and start the car again. Guys, the dogs ran past James into this area, so we're trying to see where they went now. And we've managed to get through the hole to... Oh, 
still happening. There they go, through there. Or more of them there. All chasing. They're on the chase. The tail is, is, came tearing past us. We got the car going. There they are, flanking next to the vehicle. Approaching levels of dam along the Yala Road, they're running parallel with the drainage line. They've gone back down into the drainage line. Let's just stop here. We'll just have a listen. Coming also on Chinatown. So the, the drainage line that they're in is just over here. Stations they have not popped out here at um, Rubble's Rook Dam yet. And they went into the drainage line to the west. And go, 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 go. Okay. they're now back at the dam. Well done, Ryan. This is such fun. Hello, little pups. These are just the pups. And there's an adult. Oh look, it's chased, they've chased an impala into the dam. Bunyala. That's amazing. This is unbelievable. I'm gonna stop up here. Stations have chased a what looks like a nyala into the dam. Um, all animals are not here. <laughs> One station here so far, I think there are three moving in there. Isn't this incredible, everybody? The yeah, so was okay. Yeah, uh, you may have heard it beeping, it's going at the moment. Alright, can I join Yeah, affirmative. Look at this everybody, you've got a great view of exactly what's going on. So the three adults, or two adults, are now streaming around. Now what I predict is going to happen is that eventually... Eventually that... What is it? Is it a Nyala? Yeah. Eventually that Nyala is going to become tired and will either drown. The hippo could attack it, I've seen that happen before. But I suspect, I'm afraid, the days of that Nyala are probably over. Alright, Kavi. Right at the damn wall now. I can't come in, I've got to wait for you to be uh, locked, so I'll just uh, take a standby. No problem at all. This is absolutely amazing. Oh. What an afternoon. <laughs> Thankfully, we got this car going again. Don't know where the other adult is. There are the 10 pups, or 11 pups. And uh, how many are there? One, two, three. Please, can you try and count them, everybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. That's still eleven. Two adults. Don't know where the other one is. Oh, look at this. So they won't go in there after him, I don't think. It's highly unlikely that they'll go in there. Uh, Craig, Craig, standing by, Yellow Channel. Oh, look at this. This is just unbelievable. Now, everybody, we might have to make way, I'm afraid, for another game drive. Um, that is how it works out here. We have to be very cognizant of the other game drives and certainly the efforts that they put in to find animals. So we may well have to move out just now. Itata Obri. Okay. Loko a fig and da home. Sure. Yeah, sure. All right. In home. Yeah. <laughs> I 
So Taxon very kindly has said there that when Aubrey comes, he's his colleague, he'll move out and let us keep filming, which was wonderful and very kind of him indeed. Okay. Okay, I'm uh, making my way from Chile Jack Line, but also I'll come to the south. Thanks, Dick. Yeah, this is actually, for, we probably will make this what we call a four vehicle sighting. So we will allow four people into it. Uh, because it's not moving and, you know, it's unlikely to, to kind of become crowded around here. This is just unbelievable. Now, now these dogs are very good swimmers, everybody. They are very good swimmers. And Ginny and Country Girl Ash, you want to know why won't the dogs go in there after the Nyala? The answer is because in order to get in there and pull that Nyala out, uh, they r run the risk of drowning. They can swim very well, but remember, they're not, they're not water predators, so they could grab it, but they couldn't then swim and try and pull it out. It's heavier than them, and so these dogs are so close now. Look at them just right here with us. So they could definitely swim to it. Whether they could kill it and then pull it out without attracting the attention of the hippo, really unlikely. little ones have got bored now. Now the adults will wait for the Sniata. I'm afraid the patience of the dogs I think is going to win the day here. Okay, okay. Right. Okay, I'm just astonishing. People, you don't see this every day. So, yesterday when we were looking at the hippo, we definitely came to the conclusion that the hippo was standing there. And Paul Rizzo, you said it looks like the Nyala is actually standing rather than uh, swimming. It is definitely standing, unless it has an exceptional ability to tread water. It's most certainly standing, Paul. And I think that dog is trying to get hold of a terrapin. <laughs> the dog, they're trying to get hold of something in the water. Uh, Paul, um, yeah, it, I don't think it will outweigh them, you know. Often, normally, it doesn't. They don't outweigh them. Normally, eventually, what happens is that it gets tired. It might, it might outweigh them. Eventually, however, if it's very deep, they'll it'll get tired and have to come out, or it'll get so cold that it has to come out, or it might die there and eventually be kind of either sink to the ground or be eaten by the the um, the terrapins. But things don't look good. The only thing in the favour of that nyala is that it's getting dark now. Now what that means is we definitely will not put a light on these dogs. They are diurnal animals and they are hunting with their pups. So we need to be very sensitive to how they move. Now we don't want to put any kind of pressure on them at all. And so we will not be putting a light on the dogs at all. Um, but, so the advantage, of course, for the Nyala is that if the dogs move off as it gets dark, it may be able to sneak off under cover of darkness. Oh, this is just astonishing. Yeah, 
copy that. Um, just to keep you posted. Oh, sorry. I just need to talk on the radio, everyone. Copy that. Um, uh, we don't have light for my face, but that's okay. Uh, we'll deal with it. Um, everybody, the great news, or the sad news for Brent, is that he has snapped the aerial on Wendy, unfortunately, <laughs> through the... <laughs> through the <laughs> this chasing of the dogs. This is a common occurrence for Brent Gear Smith. It's a common occurrence if you're ever going to stay with dogs on the hunt, and there is no better in the business than Brent Gear Smith than staying with dogs on the hunt. So, unfortunately for him, his uh, day is over, as it were, but we're going to stay with these dogs for as long as we possibly can. Look at the little puppies there. This little pack of three adults has done an astonishingly good job of looking after all 11 of these babies. I think they only had 12 to start with, and the fact that they've only lost one is really astonishing. I don't know where the other adult is though. I'm sure it's all right. So we were just chatting about what are the chances of that Nyala surviving this. Um, Marlene, you have correctly stated that perhaps darkness is going to be its friend. I think darkness will be that Nyala's friend. I think that the dogs don't have great night eyesight. It's better than ours, but it's not like a cat's. They only hunt on moonlit nights. There's not going to be a moon tonight. There's a big bank of cloud coming over. So the Nyala, which sees probably about the same standard as the dogs do at night, might be able to slip off. If they are around here though and they get wind of that Nyala coming out of the water, they'll smash it. But darkness is what that Nyala is going to have to wait for. I think the water is probably pretty warm, it's very shallow, so I don't really think that hypothermia is going to be too much of a problem. These little dogs. <laughs> the little ones are just over here by. Hi guys! Gonna play around here. Here's one of the adults. And the little ones will now be really frantically hungry. So like I say, just to warn you everybody, I don't think we're going to see the end of this because we won't put a light on them. So... So we won't be putting a light on them because they are diurnal. We don't want to threaten them. They've done so well to raise these 11 pups to the age that they have, just the three of them. This is just spectacular. And I'm sure you can hear in the, and see in the ex astonishing excitement that Brent and I feel that for both of us, wild dogs on the hunt are the most exciting thing that we can possibly see out here. Brent goes almost catatonic with excitement. Now, once, when I was a, a young guide, uh, many years ago, we had a pack at a place called Ngala, not far from here. Um, it's starting to rain, everyone. This is really not great news for us. Um, was led by an alpha dog that had a black tail. It's the only dog that I've ever seen that had a black tail, and as Velma has correctly pointed out, they are mostly white-tailed at the back, almost universally so, and I think that's a good, um, it could well be, because that's a good way for them to follow each other. Let's see what happens now. If you hear some rustling and stuff and the camera isn't moving, it's because we do have to put a rain cover on it, otherwise it will explode and, and um, in a 
Brian's hand, and that won't be very good at all. So, if you have just joined us, we have just had the astonishing privilege of watching these wild dogs hunting. And there are 11 puppies behind us, two adults in front, but there is an adult missing, but I think that's just that he or she has got lost on the hunt. As far as I understand it, this is known as the Investec Pack. It's certainly the pack that we see here most often. And there we've got one of the adults and all of the puppies are behind us now. We'll get you a picture of them as soon as we've managed to get the rain cover on to the camera. Really very important. Um, Andrew, I could try and maneuver this car. I'm just wondering if it's going to start. And I don't want the hooter to go off again. There we go, we're okay. down there if they're going to move around too much because like I say we've made this what we call a four vehicle sighting which is absolutely fine it's perfectly sensitive to the animals as long as they're not on the move and there are all the puppies really nice bird's eye view well done Brian So there is a certain amount of danger that these dogs face at the moment. They're out in the open and there's certainly a kill on the way. Now there's a very distinct predator hierarchy out here amongst the major predators and it is obviously fronted here, they're moving away, they're moving on. It's fronted by the lions, then the hyenas, then the wild dogs, then the leopard, then the cheetah. And Monique, you want to know first of all um, are they in, at risk from other predators? All the time. They are definitely at risk from other predators, hyenas and lions specifically. Then you want to know how big is that nyala in relation to a wild dog. That nyala is bigger than one adult, about one and a half times the size I would say. And two of them would certainly be able to kill it. I suspect one of them could if they got hold of it. But two of them, along with the help of the pet, the pups will help a little bit now. In the, when the killing begins. They're all just behind us there. The pups will certainly help if the killing begins and yeah then, then I mean the Nyala will have absolutely no chance whatsoever. a day. Started out very quietly indeed. I had a brief feeling of wild dogs, I must say. Very patient now. And one thing with a lot of these mammals, you can get emotion from a dog's face, you can get emotion from a cat's face, you don't get any emotion from a, an antelope's face. Their faces look the same, whether they're terrified, ecstatic, um, about to give birth, not about to give birth, starving to death, it doesn't matter. The, face, um, the facial expression is the same. And what I wonder is what's going through that hapless antelope's mind right now. It 
must be almost terrified out of its wits. make the comparison between these dogs and hyenas and the, the big thing to remember of course is that hyenas are more closely related to cats they're a lot bigger than these dogs um, but they do live in a similar kind of society well sort of and many of you would also have seen like Bree has mentioned that they, when you go to a hyena den the little pups or the cubs come up and they start to bite on the wheels and you want to know if the dogs will do the same Bree they don't the dogs don't tend to come that close. They certainly will come pretty close. They don't tend to investigate as much, and I think it's because they're not scavengers. They're one of the few predators that won't out here that won't kill and scavenge. They will only eat fresh meat. They're all going round the side now. There we go. Some nice movement now. Here they all come. Pups are just coming up the side of the dam wall there. regular watchers will have seen this before. Apparently Marga and Larry have just told us that this happened last year in this very dam. A pregnant impala was chased in. Didn't end well for the impala. We've certainly heard many times, and Christine, thank you. Um, we've also heard of this happening twice in the Arethusa dam in the last, ooh, what, in the last probably month. These three adults have chased a youngster or not a youngster that chased Nyala, Bushbuck, I think, into the dam and twice the hippo actually killed the prey and the dogs didn't get to eat it after all. And so that's why I said that Nyala is not necessarily safe from the hippo. Now, Jackie's class, you've got five minutes left of your class. Well, I'm so glad that you're spending some time here. And apparently you, you can hear some yipping or some calling of birds. And you want to know if it's alarm calling or birds calling. It is almost certainly uh, a birds calling. The dogs are not calling to each other. They did do some little bit of whining at each other briefly just now. But at the moment, they're totally silent. And if we look at the ones on the wall here, on the damn wall in front of us, they are listening carefully, especially the other adult. It's listening carefully to see if it can hear, I suspect, to see if it can hear um, the other adult. I wonder if that's what they haven't heard. I'll tell you what. Brian, Brian I can do that. Um, Anna Marie, how long they'll stay for? They will. Oh dear, I've, I've made a mess of the light. Uh, oh, sorry, we just have to figure out the light here. Uh, Anna Marie, they will stay here for as long as it's safe. Now, at night, dogs are not safe. Well, I mean, no real, no animals particularly safe out here. But the dogs are not very safe. And so they won't, they will probably hang around the place, but they won't be running around like this during the night, especially as there's no moon at all. Let's find some kind of elephant dung to chew on while they wait for the nyala. 
and this is a common thing people it's not unusual for this to happen for an animal to go herring into the water to get away from uh, certainly wild dogs and leopard and lion leopard and lion of course if it, there's going to be a kill and they do make a chase the chances of it going um, unless it's right next to the water uh, it wouldn't happen like this because it's either over they either miss and then give up or they the little ones are coming right towards us they either miss and give up or they kill quickly and then that's the end of that but the dogs of course will chase from a long way off valid and interesting comments. Thank you from Penny Pine and Bear Ronka. Um, <laughs> Penny, you think that that Nyala is being very smart by standing still. It is certainly being smart. But Bear Ronka, you think maybe it's in shock. I think it's probably a bit of both. I think it knows that if it comes anywhere from where it is, I think it is being smart. It's right in the middle of the water there. It's not closer to either side right in the middle of the water and I don't think it's going to go uh, anywhere from there. I think it might spend the night in the water. Luckily for it, uh, it is sort of summertime. Yeah, I say sort of because there's a chilly wind blowing. Ravi in New York, I'm just turning the light, <laughs> the light on, <laughs> um, along with uh, one or two hassles that, oh dear, along with one or two ha <laughs> I've got yeah, a strobe light going. <laughs> you put it on strobe function, uh, I'll hold it as well. Uh, along with one or two problems that Rusty's having, we don't have a light yet for the face, so we've got a, a portable light. Uh, Ravi, you say that hippo are herbivores. Absolutely they are. Why would they pose a threat? I don't know the answer to this because I've seen hippo footage of hippo saving animals from predators, uh, certainly from crocodiles. I've, we've seen at Arethusa them killing animals that are in mortal danger. Uh, they don't eat the animals at all, they kill them. I think it's because they don't want to attract predators to their area. I think they're very very, they feel highly threatened, they're certainly the animals that feel the most threatened because they have to have the water. So they need to be in the water all the time. So they have to be very careful about allowing predators around the place and I think that's probably why they do it. The aspect ratio or, or the, the, as, the sort of two-dimensional picture that you're getting is not an, an accurate reflection of how far away the impala is from the hippo. Um, it's, it's probably at least sort of 30 or 40 meters. It's quite a long way away from the hippo. So it, it looks closer than it is on the picture that you're looking at. The dogs are right next to me now, but we can't put a light on them, so it's almost, I mean, it's almost pointless shining on them or looking at them. Oh, look at that. So the camera, you may notice that it's starting to look a little what we call pixelated and that's just or grainy that's because it's much darker than it looks on your screen and so the camera is really trying to suck out as much light as it can from what are incredibly dim conditions As we were chatting about things with Ravi and the fact that these hippo are herbivores, so why on earth would they be killing something like that Nyala? And Lindsay, you have just pointed out, of course, that they do regularly save uh, prey species from predators. I don't know how regular it is, but Lindsay, I've certainly seen footage of it, uh, but I've equally heard many stories of hippo killing prey species that were being chased by predators. So, you know, it's a very difficult one to understand from the point of view of the hippo. Ooh, it's getting dark. I mean, it is almost, it's almost pitch black. 
Marianne, I think you just you just made the, <laughs> made the comment that you hope that the hippo does chase the dogs off. Um, yeah, I sort of share that sentiment. I don't like seeing a terrified, hapless animal there. The dogs have to eat, though, of course. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. You know, I don't think that these dogs will be vaguely afraid of the hippo. They're so much faster than the hippo would be. The hippo will not be long before they actually come out of the water now. And then Monique in London. You want... Sorry, I'm just having a quick look at what's going on. You want to know basically what do the dogs eat most of the time? Well, they eat animals exactly that size. Not the size of an adult male impala, but they'll take steenbok, they'll take kudu if they can, and they'll take much bigger prey if they can with a big pack. But they remember there are only three adults in this little pack. So they, this is, Nyala is about the right size for them. And feel that breeze, or you can't feel it, but I can feel a breeze come, starting to come. It's touched with a little bit of moisture from the clouds, and it is now. And the smell of them, Brian's just actually pointing out to me, of course, this incredible wet dog smell that is assailing our nostrils. And I mean, at home, when you smell this, it's not a very pleasant smell, but out here, it's the most exciting smell in the world. Thank you for that, Brian. It does, um, it really does smell like a kind of dirty, wet dog. So these puppies will normally stay with the pack for about a year. Oh, there's the adult. Just giving some discipline. Oof, and that smell is really strong, especially after Brian's just mentioned it. I'm now looking for it with my nose, of course. And, mm, it's got a powerful, eh? tang to it. It is a real tang. So they, they will normally leave the pack after about a year. And Ravi, what happens then is that they go off and the males will go one way and the females the other and they will form a new pack with males and females from other packs and so that stops inbreeding that's generally what happens so these guys will probably hang around until just about until the breeding season next year and then they might will probably move off you'll probably find in a small pack like this that a few of them might remain behind and sort of augment the size of the pack that's quite possible Now, you think it's dark on your screens, everyone. I can barely see those dogs in front of us. So, just to reiterate to all of you, and I know you're all enjoying it, but we are not going to turn any lights on for these dogs. Um, they are diurnal animals. If it was just the adult pack, um, I would eat a big elephant. Ooh. This is going to be interesting. This elephant has taken great exception to the dogs. I'm also not going to put a light on the elephant. So just to say, what I would do, in the absence of the pups, I'd put on a very sort of dim LED light, but because that may well threaten the pups. It might attract other predators. We don't know if it does. There is some evidence to suggest that lights and spotlights will run get out. I can't be stuck here on this wall. This elephant decides to come down here. do not like predators, as you just noticed. So, just back to the lighting thing, there is some evidence to suggest that spotlights might attract something like a hyena. We 
definitely don't want to attract a hyena to this area and so we're going to leave the lights off if it was just the adults i'd put on a dim light um, but it isn't so i'm not going to i'm afraid question from Leslie will they give up in the darkness they might give up Leslie I don't know to be honest what they're going to do it is quite interesting to see I'm not really sure I shall see you in the morning yes marvelous sighting yeah, that's why I've moved off the wall So we'll come down to the water side here. Alright, so everybody, we're going to just sort of plant ourselves over here, get a different view, at least you can get the light of the dimming sky. What I will do is put a light onto the hyena, uh, not to the hyena, um, that's, what's that thing called? It's a nyala. We'll put a light onto the nyala and that'll give a bit of a view as to what's going on. Um, Brian, we wanted to see if the elephant comes down, of course. So what I'm going to do is just reverse into this little nook over here. And there, we'll give you a little Nyala maybe. Just reverse up here. See what happens. So the dogs on the other side of the wall there. There's no point in us following them because of course we can't put the light on. I'm just taking off this rain cover. Okay. I'm just going to take the rain cover off. You can see there the beautiful horizon. And that light of the eye there you can see is the Nyala. So, we were chatting briefly earlier about the predator hierarchy and lions at the top, then hyenas, and Sarah in Ohio, aged just 18, will the dogs go away if, a, if the hyenas come through? Definitely. They will definitely go away. They won't stop to fight hyenas in the darkness. That is a highly unlikely thing for them to do. If it was one or two hyena, then they might. Uh, but with these, even with these little pups, I just don't think that's going to happen. So... It's probably about 20 degrees Celsius here now, with a wind chill probably down to maybe 16. Um, and there's one dog on the wall there. I can just make it out. There you can see it in the top of the corner there. And Christine, you were talking about hypothermia and the possibility of that Nyala getting hypothermia. Christine, I'd say the water is probably sitting in about 21 or 22 degrees Celsius, maybe even more, in fact probably around 24. That's pretty warm and so I don't really think that hypothermia is going to be too much of an issue for a few hours. You said you think probably about an hour, I think it's got a lot longer than an hour in water of this temperature. Um, the difficulty is when the wind starts to blow because then its back is going to get cold and obviously it's not designed for, to be in water and so eventually, well, but like us in water, it will start to get a little bit uh, wrinkly and eventually probably struggle. Now, it's still sitting there. There is still a dog watching it from the top of the wall. The hippo have also turned. And it is always nice when our viewers show deep concern for us 
Um, certainly there was a lot of outpourings of sympathy for Brian and the injury he sustained. Oh dear, here we go. The hippo is moving towards the Nyala now. Hmm. Sharon, and you worry that whether we are safe or not. Sharon, the night time doesn't really affect us in the vehicle. We're okay. We do need to be careful, of course, always. Like that elephant was coming and it's just, you know, we couldn't escape from the elephant on the top of the wall. So we came off the wall just in case he was got so irritated by the dogs that he took it out on us. The mm, Nala is now moving, but we're pretty safe here. He's certainly not going to take any chances, though. That Nyala knew immediately that the hippo were moving towards it. And it's now heading towards the shore. So Baronka, you want to know why we've put the light on the Nyala? Um, it's just simply so that you can see it, basically. It's not going to affect the Nyala. It's a very, very dim LED light. It's not nearly as bright as it looks on your screen. So it's almost pitch black to my eyes and I have to actually, when I want to see where the Nyala is, I've actually got to look at my viewing monitor. So don't worry, we're not affecting it and we're certainly not going to put any direct light onto it. We want it to have the best chance it can. It's coming out of the water now. I will tell you that the dogs are coming. Now if the dogs come this way, I'm going to have to kill, kill the light, I'm afraid. The Nyala is now out of the water. So I don't want to shine it, shine the light on it at all now, so I've taken the light clean off it because I don't want to affect whether the dogs kill it or not. We could very easily stick a spotlight on it and the dogs would come running, I'm sure. They are coming. They are actually coming. If they get around here, I'm going to kill the light, everybody. I'm very sorry about that. You can see them running there. Right, I'm going to kill the light and we're just going to listen. Here they come. They're coming past us. We'll tell you if you he we hear them kill. Oh, it's gone back into the water. <laughs> Oof, the dogs are growling. There. Oh, you can't even see anybody. I'm sorry about this. But really, one day we will get an infrared camera We'll also possibly get, there's another elephant there, coming down. Sorry, I'm just going to turn the light on, I need to see what's going on, just in case. There we go, we're okay. So, we're sitting here basically in the pitch black darkness, a glorious little horizon there, sort of dimly lit. And Paul and Monique, very good questions about who can see in the dark, how well the Nyala sees in the dark, can the dog see in the dark. Um, the Nyala will see better than us, but not as well as a cat in the darkness. And likewise, Likewise, the, the dogs will probably see about as well as the Nyala can see. So much better than us, but not very well. Oh, here come the hippo. I'm just going to quickly flash the light on. Okay, the hippo are going for the Nyala now. Oh dear, they're on it. They're right there. So I know you can't see anything. The hippo, from what I can see, and I mean I'm looking, I'm pretty much staring into the darkness here. I'm going to just flick the light on quickly. Um, oh, I still can't really see because I've turned it. The first hippo is no more than six feet from the Nyala. The pups 
are all pretty close by on the right hand side of your picture. We're just going to leave, probably have to leave the camera on the angle that it is because that's the only <laughs> way you're going to see that you're actually receiving a picture. So just to reiterate, if you've just joined us, diurnal animals, meow is diurnal, dogs are diurnal, we don't want to attract any other predators, we could do that if we turn the light on, we could also blind the nyala which would put it at an unfair advantage, so while this is unfortunately not easy for you to see, well it's impossible for you to see, I will narrate through what I can see, and one day when we have the equipment for it, we'll be able to do this without affecting anything. There have been two elephants that have come past here that I have, ha have seen. One just very quietly in the bush to the left hand side of your screen and the other a big bull who was shouting because he saw the predators and that's very common with elephants. Now that all the dogs are right in front of us, all 11 of them, I can just see 11 little shadows. The hippo, that's a hippo snorting. I'm sure they're getting closer to the nyala. They're probably watching the dogs as well. So we'll just keep sitting right where we are. And thank you, Suzanne, for your compliment and, and understanding that we can't, of course, turn the light on. That is just the way of things. The dogs have now moved off en masse to the right-hand side of your screen. I'm not sure why they've done that. I can just, if you listen carefully, you can hear them drinking. And possibly a good time, while we're, there's a bit of a hiatus in the action here, um, possibly a good time to talk about the social structure of dogs. And country girl Ash, you want to know, do they run like, the, like wolf packs? They run exactly like wolf packs. Two alphas, alpha male and female, will take care of the breeding. And then there's a beta pair, and sometimes they breed, and most of the time they don't, and often the alpha pair will kill the beta pair's pack, cubs, pubs, if they do have them. Um, but, yeah, that's exactly how it goes. And the rest, there's a very strict dominance hierarchy. So, there is a hiatus. The hippo has moved away from the nyala. It's now, the distance is now about 20 meters. That is about 70 feet. So that kind of interaction has stopped. The dogs are off to the right hand side. You may be able to hear the pups making the odd whining sound. Not that, that was a bird. Another bird. Mm, now, what we did when we watched these dogs at the beginning, they were chasing this nyala through the bush, and eventually the nyala leapt into the water. And Sandra, you want to know if the nyala could outrun the dogs? No. That's why it got it ha took the chance to leap into the water on a straight. If you had a hundred meter straight and you put a nyala against a wild dog, I think it would be a pretty close race. But with a pack of them, after one, you see what they do is that they separate out the. Ooh, you, there it was dogs you heard They're all around the dam now in different places. So what happens is the pack separates out the. Nyala cow from the little herd and because there are so many of them and only one of her there's a lot of panic she can't see where they're going they're running through the woodland they are the odds are really stacked in the dog's favor so very difficult for her to then outrun the dogs in an environment like this Um, we've 
a bit of a discussion today about the different the hierarchy of predators of the top five predators here, not to be confused with the big five, an antiquated term that in my opinion should never be used again. But the top five predators, Ravi in New York, wonderful questions we're getting from you today. Thank you for them. Lions at the top. You've said jaguars. Jaguars, of course, don't occur here. They occur in South America. You probably meant, meant leopard. So how it goes here is lions, they're big and in groups. Hyenas, they're almost as big and in groups. Then dogs, they're smaller but in a group. Then the leopard and then the cheetah. The two solitary predators way below the other three. And that is simply because of the fact that they cannot take risks. The dogs, the hyenas and the lions are prepared to take risks because they live in groups and it so therefore means that even should they be injured they will still be able to eat. So that's the kind of predator hierarchy that we have here, Ravi. Um, the dogs are pretty much third and second. It depends on the numbers as to what's, you know, where they sit. And it's purely got to do with the amount of risk that they can take and then size. So at the moment, the hippos have moved even further away from the Nyala. They are about hmm, 30 meters, Brian? 30 ish. That's almost 90 to 100 feet. And they seem to be thinking about coming out of the water to go and graze. The dogs, I've actually lost sight of. I'm going to flick that because there's not much action going on. I'm just going to flick the light on quickly and see if we can see them. They've gone. You know that. You see the dogs? No. The dogs have gone. That's interesting. I wonder if that one that was on its own didn't make a kill. It called the others away. We'll just lift the light a little bit so that it's not shining straight onto the dam. <laughs> the dogs have gone. And I can't hear them anymore. So, we had lots of very good questions about whether or not they'd stay, whether they'd outweigh it, and I think what's happened is either the other adult has killed and perhaps called them and they're now going to look there, or they're around the corner huddling in a group. They will need to stay in a group, of course, because what happens is that once the night falls, of course their vision is, is that much poorer, and they also, there's no moon, so they don't see very well. I'm just going to kill the light again, I'm afraid. I don't want to affect the interaction between the Nyala and the Hippo. So we'll kill that light. The other light's having no effect on it at all. Okay, so I think the dogs have gone to ground. Either that or they've gone off to try and find something else to eat with the other um, pack member. But it's, there's no moon tonight. And so it's going to be very dark and they won't hunt in, in light like this. It's dangerous for them to hunt in light like this. They run at such a speed that the chances of them ripping out their guts, and this does happen, especially with cheetah, who run at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles per hour, they, if they're running and they don't see what's going on, they can sort of run over the top of a sharp stump and cut themselves and really hurt themselves badly. And the dogs, you know, they run at such a lick through this woodland that they won't hunt on a dark night like this. So let's just sit here for a few more minutes. I don't think there's any real point in us disappearing from here. And those dogs are now moving with the pack. So we had 11 pups and 3 adults and the youngsters are now moving with the pack. And that, what that means, and just to dovetail into Monique's next question in London, that means that they don't have a den anymore. They've left the den, they're now running with the pack. And this is the first time I've actually seen the pups hunting with the pack. We've seen them moving with the pack before and, no, and then the dogs, the adults have normally left them bunched underneath a bush somewhere. They'll go off and hunt and then come back and regurgitate food for the pups. It's the first time I've seen the pups actually on the hunt with the adults which is very exciting. Just quickly to finish off, I think I'm not sure that I answered Ravi's question correctly where you wanted to know Ravi the success rate of the predators, of those top five predators, what's the kind of you know, hierarchy. Definitely the dogs are the most successful. They kill about 70% of the time that they chase, which is astonishing. It's at least double lions. Probably leopards are probably about 40%, lions about 30, um, hyenas 
Ooh, what's going on here? I'm just going to have a quick look. Ooh, oh, that Nyala's now in trouble. All three hippo are moving towards it. If they do attack it, I will turn the light on because there's not, you know, the, we're not going to affect it if there's an actual attack. Let's just watch what's happening here. I can't see. I can see as much as you can at the moment. But we'll be able to hear if something goes kawula. So I think that we, we've got eight minutes left of the drive. I don't think there's any point in us going anywhere else. We're not going to spot anything else. Um, so I'm also not even sure I'll be able to start the car. So let's wait here. Let's see what develops. Dogs have gone. Might be close by. Let's see what the hippo do. Um, we'll just, I'll keep an eye on it or I'll keep an ear on it while I just answer the rest of Ravi's question. So dogs at the top, probably leopard and hyena around the next. Lions at about 30%. I think cheetah only kill, a, mm, I think they only catch about 20% of what they chase. Maybe 30. So dogs way out in front about seven in ten chases resulting in a kill. So the <laughs> Interesting, I've just caught a whiff of them, did you smell that? Mm. Just got a little breeze, I wonder if they aren't just off to the left hand side there. Little whiff of the dogs, very strong smelling. Debbie, I must agree with you that I find it quite amusing that we were sitting here in the dark waiting for something to happen, turn the lights on and poof, gone. Yes, bit of egg on the face there. But I think we'll just sit here for the next eight minutes. Oh dear, sorry. So this pack is a very small adult pack of only three and then there are 11 of course little pups and so that's quite a small pack and you will see pictures of packs of up to 24 sometimes 30 animals at a time and Ollie in the UK you want to know does the pack ever get too big um, such that it would split yes I suppose it would it's unusual though so I mean to have a pack of say 24 adults is highly unusual Normally, because of the offspring leaving every year, the actual adult pack is very seldom... Mm, still no contact. The actual pack is very seldom more than, say, 12 adults. Maybe up to 18 adults. And they'll be happy with that. I'd say probably... I'm just keeping an eye out here. I would say greater than 18. And the eye is coming out the water. You just see a kind of sort of black shadow moving towards us. I'm just going to flick the light on. Yeah, he's, she's making her way out of the water now. I'm rather rooting for her at the moment, I must say. Hoping that she'll get out and survive. Yeah, she's walking slowly out. So Ollie, I would say about 18 is probably about the size limit of, of an adult pack, uh, but it very seldom gets to that size where they're all adults in the pack together. Normally there'll be some youngsters there and they'll move off after the first year. Males in one direction, females in another direction, and they'll form packs with other dogs. A small pack like this, like I say, I think we'll find that some of them will stay for the next year. The Nyala is now out of the water and it does beg the question where are the dogs and as Christy has asked will it know that they're gone? I don't know Christy. If those dogs get wind of it they'll come now but if it can sneak away and get a little bit of distance between it and the dam it might be okay. Now it's come out of the dam. I feel it is rather stupidly going the same direction that it did the first time it came out. You can smell the dogs again. Mm -hmm. They're still around. Okay, it's gone around the corner, so I'm going to turn the light on. 
I'm not so worried about the hippo and the light. Uh, it's just going around the corner so we can't see it anymore. So we'll just turn the light on so that there's a little bit of light in the situation. So we saw those two elephants earlier. Um, I think you got a brief visual of those tusks shining in the darkness there from that bull and then I saw a cow just around the other side just after that first time that the just after the first time the Nyano came out of the water and Monique you want to know what comes down to drink at night Monique there's no rule you will find though it's more likely to be the nocturnal animals elephants often drink at the night time at night time though and I mean the best way to check that is to flick onto the Juma Dam cam or the Arethusa camera or the Tao camera which is in Madikwe or that one at Pete's Pond and watch it at night time maybe flick it on keep it in the bottom screen of your TV perhaps and you'll see that lots of things come down to drink at night I've seen plenty rhino will come and drink at night buffalo will come and drink at night normally the bigger animals that aren't in such danger certainly some predators will come and drink at night You'll probably find that smaller things like Nyala and Impala will avoid drinking during the night time because obviously they can't see what's... So the Nyala has gone around the corner. The hippo thought about getting out the water. And I think it's quite unusual that these hippo have not come out of the water. Normally they'd come out at just after dark and they'd go off and start grazing. And Ellen in Arkansas, well that pretty much answers your question, will they come out, but are they not coming out because of the dogs? I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, these dogs pose no danger to hippopotamus. I suspect we, well, they came out yesterday with Brent standing here, so I'm not sure why they aren't coming out now. There are three of them there. And they're pretty much nocturnal, so we, I mean, we do shine lights on them, doesn't seem to have any effect on them at all. So I've heard nothing, nothing further. Thank you for your very kind compliments, Joanne, on my narrating skills. Um, we are soon to be departing. Now I'm just going to have a quick listen. I definitely didn't hear anything. Brian, you didn't hear anything, did you? I think we would have heard the Nyala. All right, that's it, everyone. Lovely yawn from the hippo, a bit of a yawn from me coming up, and also Brian, thank you. Wonderful afternoon, incredible questions and comments. Thank you so much for them. Big thank you to Brian, holding the cell phone, uh, doing um, about 30 things. He's using his feet as well at the moment. Thank you to Louise and Tara and Brent, the broken aerial of Wendy and Andrew. We will see you tomorrow morning, 5.30 in the morning. I hope you had a good time tonight. I certainly had an incredible time. We'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye.